I'm here. All right. Hey, it's Kevin Sorbo here. You guys may know me as this guy right here. For seven years, I played Hercules on TV. Got to do a little bragging. We were the most watched TV show in the world. Shot that. I know it's a long time ago. From 1993 to 2000. After that, I did a series called Andromeda. First show Gene Roddenberry wrote after Star Trek. That was a five-year uh, nice role there. Since then, I've shot over 60 movies. There's about a dozen I wish I didn't do, but you can't always have good ones, can you? And uh, just uh, just staying busy, doing a lot of movies coming out. I got I got six projects waiting to come out right now, but due to a little virus, all movie theaters are now closed. So uh, we're waiting until the world and uh, let my movies come on out. But uh, staying busy, doing a lot of speaking events. I've got a new TV series coming up. We start shooting in July, back in, no, in August. August, September, I'll be back in L.A. and uh, just staying busy. That's great stuff. All right. Welcome in Kevin Sorbo, Hercules, and everything else. 60 films. Let me ask you, just, just because you mentioned it, how many times do you know people have been a part of a film and they say, Damn, I wish I didn't take that credit. Shows up on my IMDb. <laughs> I think that happens a lot. I mean, you don't know, you don't go in. I mean, I read a script and I look at the role they're offering me. I don't look at this go, you know, I'm just going to do it for the sake of doing it. Um, but uh, you, you don't know what. I mean, it could be from the director, it could be from the actors, it could be from the editing room or something. And you kind of go, wow, that movie didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to turn out. But there's a great interview I saw years ago with Sir Michael Caine. When asked, um, you know, you're Sir Michael Caine. You've won Academy Awards. You've won all these other awards. You, you've done amazing movies. Um, why would you do Jaws 3D? It's either Jaws 4, Jaws 3D, one or two. And the, and, and, and the guy said, did you even see the movie? He said, no, but I saw the house that had built me in Spain. So I thought, you know, sometimes if, they, <laughs> if they're going to give you enough money to do a movie, you know it's crap. You still do it because we all got mortgages to pay, right? Right, right. I love that. So did you see the house in Spain? That's for great material. All right. So now you're from Minnesota. I know you're kind of a, a big Minnesota sports guy. Yes, it is the sports circus and we talk about sports. But guess what? A lot of times you'll see people in the entertainment business root for their sports teams. But you'll also see a lot of those sports athletes, right? All these pro athletes. They'll say, well, hey, 
when my career is over, maybe I want to be an actor, a musician. I want to do something. I want to keep myself in the bright lights. Now, you had kind of an interesting experience coming from, well, let's face it, the greater Minneapolis area, right? Yeah. Now, you were you went to school, if I'm not mistaken, in western Minnesota, did you not? I was actually northwest and far north. I went to Moorhead northwest. State University, which was uh, right across the Red River from North Dakota State University, which anybody who follows college football, NDSU has had a hell of a program the last 10 years. I think they've won, what, nine national championships right. um, in the last 10 years or so. And you got Concordia College up there as well. So between the three colleges, all within miles of each other, you had about 30,000 students. So uh, I, played, uh, I played basketball up there, uh, loved it. Coach Dave Shellhouse was our coach. And he was a um, uh, all American at Purdue University back in yes. the mid sixties. Play, played with Chicago. I'm a for, yes, he is. And he played with Chicago. He played with the Bulls, I think, for three three years. He played. Then he got then he got injured. Took him out. But he was a coach up there for a long time. They had re really good teams up there. It was Division. We were Division three then. They're Division two now. But it was. Uh, I uh, loved it. Had a great time and uh, had a double major marketing and advertising. But I had a minor in drama because. I knew that I wanted to act, so I, I did. I, I sort of followed it, but I look at my marketing, advertising, double major is what I do. I market and advertise myself. Yeah, and that was interesting. So you're a dragon. You chose to be a dragon instead yep. of maybe a gopher or something else. I was probably surprised. I know about the was it red, gray, and white? I believe of of Moorhead, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much, pretty much red and white, which is the same colors of my high school in a little mound, Mount Wastanka Mohawks. They all went politically correct about, I don't know, about 15 years ago. They changed the name from Mohawks to Whitehawks. And so I remember I was, I was back visiting. I was talking to the drama department at my high school. And I went and talked to the principal. I said, so were there a bunch of Native Americans marching around the school and very upset about, you know, the name Mohawks that the high school's had for 100 years? Because, no, we just thought it was the right thing to do. And they changed it to Whitehawks. And I said, well, wow, isn't that racist? But anyway, that's an old joke. But anyway, <laughs> um, um, I, I find it interesting that a little town like Mound, Minnesota with 7,000 people, no one knows about where the high school. You still got the Boston Red Sox, the Washington Redskins. You get these big, big teams known around the world that haven't changed their name. But, you know, welcome to our PC world. This is what we got to put up with now. It's pretty ridiculous. And I'll tell you, the day – that the National Hockey League ever tries to force my Blackhawks into changing their name is the day that I completely abandon the National Hockey League. It's, it's, well, it's folks, insane. we're here with Kevin Sorbo. Kevin, listen, man. If if the leagues start to force changes of names, what do you think they're going to call the Redskins? What's going to happen over there? I don't know. They'll, they'll probably do something, maybe something political to make them happy. I don't know. The, the Washington Senators. Well, they've already got the center. Uh, Washington. But that wasn't that. They were the Senators before they moved to the Minnesota Twins in baseball, right? Yeah, the Senators were the old baseball team. Yeah, right. before they moved to the, became the Minnesota Twins. They were, they were the Senators. So maybe they'll take a name like that. I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen. I mean, I think, I you know, I don't, I don't know a boatload of, of Native Americans, but I know enough. And every one of them that I know, I know ones that own, that, that are like casino owners in Minnesota on, on, on Native land. And I've asked them about that, you know, privately. I said, be honest about it. Does it offend you with these names? And a lot of them look at it as a badge of honor. And I don't, I think I would too. Look, I'm a Norwegian guy. I'm 100% Norwegian. I like the Vikings, but maybe get rid of the Vikings, right? Because, oh, well, they were, they were, <laughs> you know, rapers and pillagers, you know? So I just read something sent me, somebody sent me now that Cinemax or one of the cable outlets is going to take Dawn with the Wind out of their circulation of movies because it's racist. And I'm going, my God, we're going back 70, 80 years now to sit there and find something to be offended by. We're erasing history. It's crazy right now. But uh, this is where we're at. And like a battle that's just insanity where people, I think so many, so many people are so upset with their lives and they don't like the way their lives turned out that they're just looking for reasons to be angry. It's like, what do you want to protest about? And I was like, well, what do you got? You know, let's just protest well, for the well, sake of on, protesting. Kevin. It's just, Kevin, think it's, about, it's sad to Kevin, me. It's think really about different. this. Think, think about this, Kevin. I think it's not what do you want to protest. It's who's paying us the most to protest. Yeah. Oh, you know that's going on. You know, it's, it's crazy.
pretty obvious with the riots going on right now. It has nothing to do with that poor man's death, you know, and it's un, uh, it has to do now with just waiting for something to use as a springboard to cause all this damage that's going on out there. And uh, I, I wish we had a magic answer to make it stop, but I think uh, our leaders have to get a little tougher, I think. And, and this is, we got to take control of our country again. I, I must admit, and, and I have to say this here in our last couple of minutes for the segment, it's amazing how there could be a movement to basically uh, put no picture on your social media and stuff like that, make it basically blank and cause a big, uh, basically a power outage, if you will, using the right words, like a big power outage, if you will, right? So a lot of people aren't using a particular platform to say things or whatever. But then you turn around and say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on in the world today? Oh, that's right, somebody's in court because they have to testify on something or they have to appear in court. I mean, what a, what a masterful Lex Luthor-like plan. You know what I mean? I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, well, this is, I don't know. I, I got to tell you, I got i got a new book that my wife and I came out right now. And what do we need in this country right now? We need a little hope. We need a little faith. And it's a book called True yes. Faith. People get a chance to check it out. It's a, it's a positive book. I hope, sorry to disappoint people, but they can go to, they can go to samsorbo.com or kevinsorbo.net. My wife is samsorbo.com. Check out the book True Faith. Get an autographed copy. It's a great book about about love and life and relationships and how, uh, you know, we should all find a place to uh, find happiness in our lives instead of just being angry all the time. Kevin, that's a great idea. A big round of applause for the book. We should get to send one of those to us. Out to our Las Vegas studios. Yes, a big round of applause. We're going to send it out to Las Vegas. Of course, when we get back, we're always in the great spots. People love the idea of, hey, you're in San Diego, you're in L.A., you're in Vegas, you're up in Utah. We were up in Utah for a while doing some really nice shots over from Sundance, which you probably are familiar with. Sundance, of course. It's just, just beautiful. I get up there. there a lot. I've been skiing up in Park City, Utah area for over 30 years. It's beautiful up there. Yeah, that's great stuff. All right, folks, we're going to be back here with supersonic superstar actor Hercules and everything else you can imagine. Author, writer, director, actor, the guy with the Callaway hat. We're not plugging them. We're just saying the guy likes to golf as well. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Kevin Sorbo. I should have PXG on. I play PXG Club, so I hope yeah. Bob Parsons doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back here with Kevin Sorbo in just a few minutes, folks. Don't go where you're lost. We're going to come back on the circus.